All right, so uh, welcome. Thank you. Um, today's Walk Listen Cafe. Uh, for a change, um, we've got exclusively Brazilian guests at this cafe. So, uh, and actually, uh, oh, let me uh, let me count uh, those who are present. Four, four out of eight currently Brazilian. So we can claim the majority. Uh, oh no, four out of nine. Oh no, 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 no. Sorry, no, my bad. Um, no, no, four out of eight. Yeah, yeah. We're winning. Very good. Fine uh, for a change. Um, and we have uh, with us uh, investigative journalist uh, Andrea Gipi and uh, artist Guillaume Peters. And um, uh, I think it was in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, but I might be off by a year, uh, they produced uh, a short film called Under Constant Threat, which is based on interviews with uh, more than two and a half thousand women uh, on the constant threat they are faced with while walking the streets of Sao Paulo. Uh, now, it's a bit of a cliche. Brazil is, of course, known for carnival, but it's also a bit of a cliche that Brazil is known for its crime. Um, uh, if we take one example, homicide, uh, uh, homicide, homicide rates very wildly from uh, city to city and state to state in Brazil. Um, and although uh, for Sao Paulo, the homicide rate has decreased immensely at uh, in the late 90s, it was around 60 homicides per 100,000 people. Uh, and uh, some 20 years later, so recently, um, it had gone down to around 20 homicides per 100,000 people. Uh, 20 homicides per 100,000 people, I mean, what does it really mean, right? I mean, you can count the numbers, but um, 20 homicides per 100,000 uh, inhabitants still means a homicide rate that is 30 to 40 times higher than it is in the Netherlands. Uh, and Sao Paulo actually is on the low end in Brazil. So crime is, it's a cliche, but it's a real problem. Uh, and partly because of Brazil's uh, quite machist culture, a disproportionate part of violence and crime is directed towards women here in Brazil. So as a consequence, uh, in Brazil's big cities particularly, uh, women do not occupy the, urban, uh, the public urban space in the same way as men do, exactly for fear of gender-based violence. And they tend to avoid places where they might be caught out alone uh, and think about uh, changing or adapting their schedules and clothes before leaving the house and uh, occasionally also taking purposeful detours when moving through the city. Now, as I said, we have uh, Andrea Gipi and Guillaume Peters with us. Andrea is uh, one of the directors and an editor at Agencia Publica, which is the oldest investigative journalism agency in Brazil, uh, which also recently um, celebrated its 10th anniversary. Uh, and she maintains a weekly column at UOL, U -O -L, which I believe is the largest media house on the continent. Um, and the column that she writes is about gender, politics, religion, and their intersections. Uh, she's received um, uh, or is the recipient of over a dozen journalism awards, uh, many of which for her work in covering human rights issues. And uh, in 2018, she published her first book uh, called Enorme de Quem, and then there's more to it, but it's about the, uh, even the influence of the evangelical uh, faction in Brazilian politics. And we have with us Guillaume Peters, who is a Brazilian artist who works in the fields of um, movie, uh, cinema, performance art, installation art, and a significant uh, portion of his work uh, is or are comments on Brazil's authoritarian past and present. And he also has received multiple awards for his work. Um, and for me, what uh, I really appreciate in Guillermo's work is that a lot of it has a very strong visceral nature to it. Uh, it's very, um, in a way, in your face, uh, but it's also very, um, um, yeah, thoughtful. Uh, first, we'll have uh, Guillermo and Andrea uh, present a little bit about their work, and then we'll watch their film under constant threat, uh, and then we follow up with a discussion. So for now, uh, Andrea and Guillermo, the floor is yours. So hello everybody. Uh, uh, Babek like just present like said almost everything. We it just uh, would like to say some some words about the the film that we're gonna show here. Uh, the documentary uh, that we're gonna show, you know, under constant threat, was made in 2016 and follows women around this uh, walking around the city of São Paulo 
and investigate how uh, harassment and gender violence influence the way that they occupy the city. Hi, hello. Uh, we we made this this film for Agência Pública, right? <laughs> this is important to say. Uh, we interviewed more than 20 people. Uh, uh, cisgender women, transgender people, migrants, people with disabilities from different regions of the city. Uh, these interviews uh, were connected into a single narrative which follows the image of women walking through dark streets, bridges, alleys in Sao Paulo. We also conducted an online survey with more than 2,500 women which showed, showed, for example, that 93% 90, of the responders avoid walking in the streets at night. Um, for example, for the question, uh, have you ever changed your route to avoid any type of gender violence? 103% answered yes, and 21% answered that they changed their path frequent, frequently. Um, based on these interviews and research, we chose the locations uh, where, uh, where women say they are most afraid to walk. Uh, we try to put a, a, a viewer in a place of tension. The film has shot, shots that can be seen both from the perspective of the woman and from the perspective of a possible aggressor. Yeah, so we strongly recommend <laughs> watching the movie with headphones and enjoy and we can talk uh, more later. All right, thank you very much. Um, I think you summed it up uh, very well. Uh, I'm going to press play and it's going to play in your browser. Uh, and indeed, if you have headsets, uh, it is recommended. Here we go. Thank you very much. I thought that was excellent. Um, if, if anything, um, well, no. Uh, first of all, does it make you angry watching it again? Uh, specifically Andrea, I suppose. Yes, I thought, you're... very angry. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good, because with that uh, we can change the world a little bit, right? Um, one thing that also um, amazes me uh, when watching this, um, uh, besides uh, the, um, the, the misogyny, um, is uh, that it shows so well how bleak Sao Paulo can be, uh, and how many, um, uh, how much of the inner city consists of liminal space, like you know places that are neither here nor there, that are in between. Uh, well, where you where you are and where you want to be, like the bridges and the alleyways and and the high walls uh, next to uh, narrow roads, um, um, they're almost uh, it's almost as if they're designed to uh, well to an extent they are to prevent people from moving around on the street. Um, is there something you wanna you wanna say right now about the film, perhaps before we jump into questions? Actually, I don't feel like prepared to talk about this because, uh, you know, it's it's something that is really discussed about where, with the architecture ar architecture people, you know. Uh, but but São Paulo is like a a, a city that is it's shaped by the corporative and 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 private companies, you know, like. There, so public space in Sao Paulo is not something that is really for the public, you know. So there's a lot of places like Babeck uh, described like that, you know, that's not, it's it's for people to, to pass, but not actually, you know, 100% thinking about like, actually, for people. it's just like, uh, right? yeah, for pedestrian people, I mean, like, it's just like, uh, oh, that, you know, need to put like a bridge here just to people pass uh, across car. the street, you know, but not, uh, they didn't think about everything involved, you know, uh, like uh, put a bridge for people just crossing this, this street, you know, like uh, 
there's could be like a yeah I don't know like you'd like to a better light <laughs> yeah. and safety uh, measures yeah. but there is not yeah and it's not a city that like is made for you 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 live in the city you know like uh, for uh, I uh, I came from this for you know I I came from the skateboard world and in Sao Paulo skating in Sao Paulo is something really specific because you know it's uh, everything is private uh, every play uh, every spot you know, you know it, it's private so you can it, it's not allowed to you to use you know the public space but yeah it's something mm -hmm. we we'll talk about. Well, I've got a few uh, maybe questions that uh, we can throw out there, but also if anyone has um, a question that they want to, or something to discuss that they want to put out, um, just uh, uh, throw your question in the group or put it in the chat or physically raise your hand or raise your hand using the app. Um, uh, and Viv, I'll let you say that. Uh, oh, I can't speak in person. Oh. Um, Viv put something in the chat that um, uh, you might want to read where she talks about an experience that she uh, sees a similar that she had in uh, Mexico City in the 70s. Um, uh, oh, one, one more thing which, which still amazes me about uh, the Passovers, we saw some of the women walk over the Passovers over the roads, is that you to get to, to cross the road you have to go through the spiral to get to uh, bridge and then cross and then go on the other side in a spiral down. Why is there no stairs? Why do I have to walk so much to cross this road? It's like they make it extra inconvenient, but it's every Passover uh, that is um, here in Brazil that is built like this. Um, so I have a few questions, but as I said, if anyone has questions uh, or things to discuss, feel free to jump in. Uh, my, my first one is when you put together the video and you did the interviews, um, did you were you surprised or were you not surprised at all or how 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 did you react to what you found well <laughs> as a woman i was not surprised at all but um it was shocking right it was kind of hard to listen and to see so many women like uh, in the online on the online uh, survey um, talking about it and they are not uh, they not feel safety um, to walk the streets to occupy the uh, your you are not um, you can't occupy your own city like I think that is the, the biggest um, feeling, right? And I know this feeling very well because, well, I, I, I have this feeling <laughs> too. So I don't know uh, if Guilherme had another experience mm -hmm. listening to these uh, women. Not actually shocking, but, you know, you, you, you have to... You, to think about that all the time, and as a man, I I, I don't have to think about, about that uh, uh, all the time. It's, it's like a choice, so that's it, it was like kind of hard, but yes, because yeah. I think that uh, how we we heard uh, for a woman, um, a woman, um, if you are a man, you only have to worry about your wallet or yeah. your money. Right. Or your uh, cell phone. Uh, your yeah. your cell phone, but um, if you are a woman, you kind of uh, will be relieved <laughs> if the only interest uh, uh, is the your your phone or your wallet or your money. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I totally hear what you're saying. When I walk, in, I, I have no problem uh, here in Sao Paulo to walk uh, anywhere at any time. Um, but that is also because I make a point of projecting myself in a kind of way that makes it appear like I control the space, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not big, but I'm big enough um, to pretend that I'm going to rob you instead of you <laughs> who is going to rob me, right? But what's very clear from uh, how uh, 
what the interviewees uh, talk about is that uh, they are being lived. They they have no choice. They um, are the ones who are being controlled, whether you know they like it or not. And of course they don't like it, but they have no say in it um, because it's others that enforce their will on them. Um, ha have you seen over the last say decade? Because <clears throat> I misremembered the date of the film. I said it was 2019, but as you pointed out, it was you made it in 2016. That's already five years ago, but have you seen change uh, in how uh, safety on the street has changed over the last 10 years, say? Well, maybe, but I think that with the, the coronavirus pandemic and the, um, and the economic crisis, I think that now, right now, uh, the streets are more dangerous and we have more people living on the streets, right? Because of the pandemic and the, the lack of <laughs> uh, employees and the, the financial crisis, right? So I think that uh, we had a change, kind of, because everybody like more aware about this, this, this stuff. But I think that um, uh, the last year, uh, we have this this specific uh, question, this problem, right? Uh, that is the the coronavirus pandemic, and so I don't know. Yeah, before that, nothing changed. Yeah, no. kind of. Yeah, a little, <laughs> a little bit. A little bit, <laughs> but now it's much yeah. worse. But also, yeah, indeed, as you say, because of the uh, economic worsening, and more people living on the street, more poverty, uh, difficult. Uh, Andrew, you had a few remarks uh, in the chat. Do you want to spill them out? Just typing rapidly away with another comment. Um, well, first of all, I thought the film was very good and uh, interesting, and I thought the way you uh, position the camera following the um, women was very interesting. Um, I'm a bit out of touch because I'm not working directly in this field, but I've worked for 25 years in community safety about uh, how we um, how we create spaces and places for uh, everybody. Mm. I think uh, a lot of people think it is just a binary thing between men and women, men and women, but it's actually much worse than that, because um, the city is um, um, an unpleasant place to be for many elderly people and uh, for many people who are very young. So uh, you're pretty much talking about 75%, maybe 80% of the population are denied the right to walk in public space. Uh, alone or independently. So, I mean, there are it, there are so many issues. I mean, for me, um, uh, one of the biggest is uh, over reliance on the motor car. So we design our cities for the person who drives the car and not for the people trying to get about on any other means of transport, public transport included. Mm, there are many issue, initiatives that have been tried and. Um, unfortunately, uh, those which are seen to have a, a capital expenditure are often the ones chosen by our city developers. So, um, uh, in uh, this country, in the UK, uh, we have a, an overinvestment in CCTV, although um, CCTV has been never proven to be successful in deterring crime. All it does is shift crime from the places that are CCTV covered to places that aren't. We have an increasing amount of underreported sexual harassment and uh, domestic crime. And most, most um, sexual uh, harassment on the street uh, in the UK is actually domestic uh, crime that takes place not behind the front door, but actually out on the street. Um, but there are some really easy interventions that can start to be made a difference. We developed something in Nottingham, which was called Stride in the early 90s. Uh, we did uh, taxi havens in Bath, and uh, I ran a project called Wa Women Walking Safely in Salisbury uh, in the mid-90s. 
And there are some really good, easy things that uh, you could try to uh, make happen. But whether they can happen in Brazil, I don't know. Culturally, you know, there's a huge challenge there as well. Um, but what we started doing was we persuaded um, ground floor um, uh, properties uh, to have their lights on at night, not to be shuttered, not to have road barred shutters, not to have barricades, but have uh, see-through shutters if need be. So there were lights on, on all the uh, ground floor um, spaces. Uh, we also... Uh, you mean like in the shopping streets, uh, like that we also saw in the indeed, video? Indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. And we uh, try to um, encourage the use of what we call um, uh, level crossing areas. So we didn't have subways or overpasses or walking bridges. Um, we encouraged uh, women and children to extend their stay in public spaces by creating opportunities to dwell. So we actually put in play uh, access, uh, play facilities, uh, benches, uh, lighting, all sorts of things like that to increase the amount of time that women and children could be in a space. Now, I'm, you know, these are all little simple interventions and um, we encourage women to walk together, um, you know, so there are, there are lots of different things that you can do in a small scale, but whether they could be done in Brazil, I have no idea because I'm not familiar with the culture, but we're fortunate mm -hmm. in, um, in many European cities that we have those um, streets which are of more human scale. You've got to remember that most of the streets in Europe, of cities in Europe, were developed before the time of the car. So we have uh, our, our central cities, central spaces within cities are, are at much more human scale. And I feel sorry for you trying to make changes in a car-dominated city. You also pointed out that uh, in the video we see no uh, children and no uh, retirees. Uh, in the peripheries of the of the film, is that coincidental, uh, Guillermo and Andrea? No, I, I, I no, actually. Um, we've never thought to put children. I think. Yeah. Because we uh, wanted to to um, actually, talk about like uh, gender-based violence, uh, harassment. Uh, sure. calls, yeah, you uh, can't cover everything. That's the problem. It is such a mass tangled web. We we did a project in the um, mid 2000s, uh, which was called No Lingering in Lewisham, and was looking at how uh, children from immigrant families um, were being particularly rounded up and moved on by the police. Now, now something that was clear in your film was there was no authority representative on any of your shots. We didn't see any police or anyone. So, but that might have been your choice, the way you filmed it. But, uh, but, but for us, <laughs> no, 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 but for, but for us in the UK, then yeah. we would expect to see uh, people in yeah. uniform and uh, in authority yeah. no. in, 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 in our central places, not, not everywhere, but many places. But what no. we discovered with no lingering in Lewisham was that actually it was um, groups of children were being moved on and being seen to be the uh, purveyors of crime, and yet they were the victims. So we, we had to look at ways in which we could make changes for that to happen. Yes, for you know, sure. It's very I think difficult. That, yeah, sorry. I think that um, uh, we, we um, interviewed women, uh, the, the women we interviewed, uh, they told about, right, um, when I was young, when I had like 10 years old, I was walking on the streets and a man, uh, I, I think that um, every woman we, we interviewed, uh, had something about, about, about the past, yeah, about, about the, the past, about growing up in some time. Yes, I mean, Brazil is uh, one of the 10 most dangerous uh, countries for for women and one of, uh, of five more um, dangerous countries for transgender people, right? So, um, yes, we, we I, I don't know, we have like, um, we have a culture of walk together, I think, women especially. Um, we we have an app 
you can like connect to another woman to walk together if there is another woman uh, near by you you can walk together with her but i think that uh, even without an app <laughs> like if uh, when i see another woman walking or uh, like <laughs> Uh, near, uh, nearby. I, I like go and <laughs> walk, together. walk together with her. I think that we we do, um, yeah, make things like that. I don't know. Benna, yeah. you had something similar that you experienced in Italy. Um, you talked about something uh, on Instagram. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Um, I didn't experience, but I saw um, there are this not for project organization, which is basically some a group of women who got together and they're offering um, Instagram lives for whoever, not only for women, but even like transgender uh. people feel unsafe at night or during the day. You will have a call with them, and so people will be aware that you are on a phone, and then you will feel safer. Because I think it's the uh, I mean, in Italy, it's, I don't know how, like, is it the, to say if it's as bad as Brazil or not, because I don't, I don't have knowledge to compare. But um, I thought it was really interesting. One of the women who um, was telling about cat calling, because I think people underestimate how a person feels when they do cat calling to you, because it's really not a compliment. And in Italy, most of the time, they would laugh and say, oh, but. They were just saying you're pretty or that you look very good on a skirt, but I think she really got the point. It makes you feel unsafe and that you don't belong there. You don't you don't own this space. So it's really something like more about like playing with your brain and how you feel. And it's really underestimated. In Italy it's it's, it's really bad because people really think ah body worry or like it's just a compliment, but it's really bad. And everybody would say that, like, even my um, male friends would think the same and they would laugh because I don't think they realize how bad they make you feel. And it happened to me. I live in a small town. I went out of my door to go to the car and then a guy from the car was just like, oh, hey, gorgeous. I was like, what the hell? Like, I don't know. Would you talk to this, to anybody on the street? It's really bad. Yeah, so as you were saying... Uh, it's a power play, very clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Can, can oh, I? Yeah. Go on. I wanted to make a comment because, um, first of all, okay, I'm away from Brazil, so I'm totally going to defend Brazil here. <laughs> but also, I really, um, so I have like the homesickness. But I really like that Andrew gave some examples in London. Uh, I lived in Lewisham. I lived in Catford. I lived in Charlton. I didn't feel safe in any of those places. Uh, London also has like places in which a woman say Charing Cross or like there's some weird places. I mean, these known places also exist very much in, and I felt like this. I also felt like this in Rome in some areas. You're like in a Hodovia, I'd say in a, in a bus station. So I just wanted to, to say that I don't think we're talking about it's a specific issue about Brazil, and I also don't think we're just talking about security, which is something that Benedict is not about violence. It's not only about uh, violence. Of course, you get more robbed in Brazil. I was more robbed in London than in, than in Sao Paulo <laughs> by far <laughs> uh, while living in these places. The, the problem, and the problem I see, it, it is, it is exact, it's a power play. And men engage in it because there is power, there's a power relation there. And I think just saying, oh, there's a problem of Brazil prevents the, the deep question, which is how do we engage men? How do we convey to men that this, well, this really impairs our, our freedom, our freedom of walking and our freedom of, you know, feeling joyful in an, in an urban environment, which I think is, one of the key issues for you guys who who who, who do walk listen to create to think about. Yeah, thank you. Uh, putting us in our place, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's very fair. Um, Bob, you also had a few remarks. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> I saw it as an experience of walking 
I've always walked on my own. As Babak pointed out, particularly walking in this liminal space. It isolated walking as an act. And because of the focus, violence to women, without the dialogue, visually, it just stays on walking. And I've never seen anything that's just about walking as an act. And it fits right into the theme, walking, listening. There's nothing to distract or detract from the actual act. Because I, I, you know, I've walked all my life. You know, I'm di predominantly a walker and, um, and a solitary walker as well, in all different countries and everywhere. And it just, of all the things I've seen, I think of all the cafes that I've attended, it's the, the, the it's the one presentation that's that, that I could relate <laughs> I could relate to, uh, because it's just simply an act of walking. I don't know what your reaction to that is. That because I'm a man, I'm totally insensitive to um, other things. But um, I thought it was jolly good. I thought it was a rather beautiful film about um, being a human being. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. or, or a tragically <laughs> film about being a human <laughs> being a woman yeah. yeah I mean I don't know but I think that uh, you can talk maybe about like this perspective right because when we show the movie some guys uh, in the audience told oh I, I felt like the yeah because like when we show the movie uh, some guys said, oh, it's just the, the point of view of the camera is not the point of view of the woman. It's, it's the point of view of like a uh, uh, possible aggressor following the woman. So we wanted to like put the viewer in this place that is, is, is there's a tension, you know, you could, you could be like in a point of view of a possible aggressor. Or, or in a point of view of uh, like of the woman, you know, there's this, this, uh, these shots that you know uh, reminds like uh, video game shots that the, you know you uh, the character is is in is in front of the camera and you control the character, but also you you are not like uh, in the POV of the character. So so it's a it's a, like a uh, a double point of view you know that could be the aggressor or the the victim uh, or the victim. No, so... okay, just can I say something extra? It's just um, my experience when I was young, you know, in my teens, I went hitchhiking all around Europe. And um, in the cars, often the driver would, for example, put his hand on your penis and things like that. And you just tried to brush it off, you know, oh, that's what happens on these sorts of things. And I found myself um, sort of fending off the dialogue in order to focus on the visuals because that's the way that I'm used to, you know, trying to normalize something that, you know, obviously it's a horrendously bad thing, but um, I've never experienced it because we, we, you know, coming from a younger, older generation, we were never told about these things. You just thought that happens, you know, it's part of life sort of thing. And if you ignore it, they'll lose interest after a while and um, you just sort of live with it. Yeah. Yeah. It is also indeed very true that uh, we are at least, uh, yeah, but it's a, it's, a, it's a small consolation talking about this more or also addressing it more than um, we have in the past. But that's not the same as uh, solving it, of course. But talking about it is supposedly step one, which is, I suppose, also why uh, or what ties into my earlier question as to how or whether you've seen it change um, at all. Uh, yeah, again, it's a small consolation, but I do think that uh, um, this has changed significantly in, uh, well, Northern Europe, where when when I was a child, it was also much more very common to whistle at women who uh, walk by um, uh, construction sites, say. Uh, but that's not, I, mean, I don't think this, anyone even considers this a thing uh, anymore. But that's a, a long, you know, it's, yeah different contexts and, and, and also this required talking about it and, and shaming uh, also those who uh, are the perpetuators of these acts. Uh, although, of course, another uh, added complexity is very much that a violent crime has never, or at least say since the Second World War, 
um, not been as much uh, an issue in uh, much, much of Europe as, as compared to uh, much of Latin America. Uh, if uh, here you stand up against an, a verbal aggressor, uh, if that might result in uh, you getting a knife between your ribs, well, then you'll, you'll think twice about doing that, right? So, yeah. Um, how does, do you know, how does Sao Paulo compare to the rest of the country? How does it compare to the rest of the continent? Or, or you don't Sao know, Paulo, it's also fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, Sao Paulo is, is like a, a very specific city in Brazil, you know, it's, yeah, we try to, to, to do a film about Sao Paulo, not like about, not, and, and if Natalia said as well, like, it's not only just to think about Sao Paulo, but, you know. Yes, it can relate to, yeah. to the situation, I think, everywhere, if you are a, a woman especially or a, a transgender yeah. person, you can relate, but São Paulo is a very specific yeah. city and uh, is where we live, right? Yeah. So we we know São Paulo very well and so this is why. And as Natalia said as well, it's, it's not a film about a crime, but it's, it's a film about a, like a violence, but not like actually physical violence, but the violence, the violence that is uh, that it, that is in language, for example, in, in yeah. the the violence that is in 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 the in the structure of of a social, you know, uh, of social and cultural. Uh, norms it's normalized norms, in the language yeah, yeah. and this feeling right this this feeling of uh, being in a constant threat i think that yeah. this is about uh, this feeling right we 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 don't walk <laughs> into the streets like oh, thinking about oh, how beautiful this is the city you know we walk into the streets like with a feeling of constant threat we and this tension, this this tension we we uh, wanted to talk about yeah. in the movie, I think. Yeah, and, and not only the tension about like you could be the victim, but you could be the aggressor. You know, like just like uh, as some experience that I have, like when I walk in, in this, you know, when I walk in the street, and there's like a woman in front of me. Uh, sometimes I I notice that that she you know, get a little bit afraid of me, and and, and I start to go. Oh, I just I'm just a sweet boy, you know. Why, why she's afraid of me? But this tension between like uh, being a possible aggressor or a possible victim is is something that's really, you know, growing up in São Paulo. That's like something that I I experience a lot. You know, uh, the city is is always in in constant, you know. Uh, Threat, you know, you, you could be uh, uh, the victim, you could be the aggressor. There's like a distension, you know, that uh, runs the city. I think not yeah. only like in in gender uh, violence or or gender structure, but all the structure, you know, like yeah. all the social structure. Yeah, yeah, and, and although you did, you made the point that it's about verbal abuse uh, more than maybe physical abuse, but with the verbal abuse, there is this this tension that um, the verbal abuse can, could easily spill over into physical abuse. You don't know what you can't know where it's going to go, uh, so it's it's always a risk to engage. Um, you know, it, it's yeah, I, I'm not uh, going to say that. I've, I have similar experiences, but if I go to places that I'm not familiar with, like say I travel to a, a distant country where I don't really know how uh, um, what the lay of the land is, it is risky to engage because I might be um, um, what's the word um, um, uh, evoke no provoke I might provoke someone into doing something based on something that I did that I have no idea about. Uh, and I, I feel that it's, this is a little bit similar. You don't know where it's going to go, so you better just don't respond and hope that it's going to go away. Um, thanks. Claudia had a question, I think, but uh, she uh, was called away. Um, 
meanwhile, while we wait for Claudia, uh, I have a question for both of you in a way, is how does this compare the work in the, of the film compared to your own other work? Yeah, Andrea and Tony. <laughs> Talk? No, you, you can. You can um, well, I, let me think. Um, I'm an investigative journalist, so I, and I uh, mostly write about uh, gender-based violence. And uh, so this is kind of <laughs> what I think and do every day, you know, uh, and see. <laughs> And yeah, I think this it's it's and uh, and I am a woman living in São Paulo, right? So it's not something that uh, relates to my work, but also with me, my uh, my uh, personal experiences and my life. Uh, every day, I I I don't know. I live in São Paulo, so every day <laughs> I walk into the streets and. I think about uh, all of this, right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. In my case, like I, I in the last years, I am really interested in how language could be used as a as a tool of you know uh, control and and dominance and and violence. So. There's, you know, all, all my works in the last years talk about that, you know, how language could be used as a weapon and as a, a control weapon. Yeah. So that's like, no, it's not so different. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it's actually very related. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Um, did uh, somebody uh, from the audience or the attendees want to add something to this? Well, I've got something else I could say. <laughs> uh, um, it seemed to be again a, a non-judgmental film. It, it, it was. Um, it was just uh, the only thing I can think that's close to it is a film by Yoko Ono of Bottoms, and that was quite a revolutionary film when it came out. I think in the mid uh, about the mid sixties, that it was just about bottoms. It wasn't sexual or anything like that. It was um, <laughs> just about <laughs> bottoms and, and non-judgmental. And it was it, that was the way in which it was controversial because it wasn't about. And similarly, I don't think, you know, the, the visuals anyhow weren't about violence. They were just about somebody walking down the street at night time. And all yes. the overtones are the overlays, overlays that the viewer would bring to them. You know, if you're a man watching it, you think, hmm, or if you're a woman, I don't know. So I think what you've done, you've allowed, you know, a subjective response to it and, and permitted that without um, influencing it. You've just presented, but this is it. There's somebody walking down the street at night time. Um, and they haven't stopped. They're just keeping going. And how does that come across? And you know, what do you make of it? And then you can read all the sort of adventures that do happen, some terrible violent scenes and all of those. And it just makes the point that these are unprovoked acts, someone just being normal and just doing something. And I think it presents that well. So the, the, the dialogue is an overlay. And it could be anything. I mean, you could put a man's, you know, the rather than the, the woman's reaction, you could have in some of the scenes put a man's um, predatory, uh, uh, you know, responses, and that would, you know, I don't know. That's, a, that's about all. <laughs> Thank you. But that's an excellent observation. Um, yeah. It's uh, the film itself is not uh, judgmental at all. Um, it just presents, uh, states the case, um, and it lets uh, the viewer decide uh, uh, on how to interpret that. Although you know, it's uh, it's not a difficult case uh, to uh, to make, but it's not made by the film. Yeah, good point. Thank you. Um, are you uh, planning on uh, collaborating artistically again? I say artistically, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, because as you know, you and Natalia, 
<laughs> this is something very difficult. Yes. To... <laughs> we are a couple. I, I don't know if everybody knows. Yes, we are yes. a couple. So yes. this is kind of difficult to, to do. And I, I don't know, but I think that one thing is we always we are always working together, right? Because yeah. we I, I think that we influence uh, another's work all the time uh, and and talk about and i don't know i i am journalist so maybe this <laughs> doesn't appear like so uh, clearly but uh, we are uh, talking uh, every day and and he helps me with my interview and yeah. i think that i also we are talking about his work as an artist as as well so i think that we we collaborate <laughs> and you wrote the the text about the, the last exhibition yes. my last exhibition yeah i wrote the the text right yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah, but i don't know I'm, i don't know if we are going to make another movie yeah i don't know well there's many things that <laughs> you can uh, put together yeah but you're right. So you are actually collaborating. Uh, maybe not, well, personally, obviously, but that spills over in your professional work as well. Uh, and the uh, um, the uh, fact that you are from very different, or that you have, that you look at these things with from a very different background, means that there is this kind of a cross pollination that uh, then also spills over into your work. Yeah, that's very true. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, this. We can say wraps it up uh, roughly. Uh, thanks, Bob.